Hey, hey, hold on. I like this. I like it. Ten dollars a minute, man. Yeah, it's a new. That's a new menace rule. You, for every minute, bit, well, 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 de well, deduct ten dollars. Now you just like bodybuilding, changing the damn criteria. Yeah, that's right. That's and right. He's there's again? No, and there's no yeah. more. There's no more. Yeah, and he's eating again. He know he's late. No, it was not. <laughs> I wish I wish he would be a little more professional sometimes. Really, he could I mean, he could go so he could go so far, right, Milos? He could go far. Hey, it's a, it's if, a if, 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 if he would here, if he would it. if he would drop the hood habits. Yeah. My, my mother said, "Time and you never got along, Chris." Uh, <laughs> that's what she said. Yeah, <laughs> she's right. She's right. You and Time never got along. <laughs> yeah. So so when when did you get home? Just yesterday? Good morning. Yesterday morning. Yeah. All right, awesome. So you've been uh, you've been, been to Toronto. <laughs> funny. Chris has a funny story about Toronto today too. <laughs> <laughs> but let's get to the let's get to the good part first. The uh, the show. I mean, Milos, sure. I, I'm going to be honest. I didn't see the live stream. I basically only whatever I saw and 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 what I think is based off pictures posted on Instagram. I saw a couple of videos. Short clips, but Chris, you were right there. <clears throat> I mean, you had a fight. You had a fight to get there. So, but you got it. You made it right. I think you, <laughs> you looked like you're sitting aside of the stage. I was sitting close as I could. Um, so now, how close was it between between Akeem and Quentin? Was it even close? Well, I mean, Akeem had some some sharper separational cuts. But that was it. I think he had, uh, you know, he was right there as far as Quentin, uh, you know, had had some good moments. You know, it's just some some certain little things that he was doing <laughs> didn't help him, you know, like breathing out of the stomach and everything. Mm -hmm. When you hit an ab shot, did not help the situation. Um, could use a little bit more tinkering with uh, some training as far as that separation in the serratus and oblique area, um, deeper, deeper, deeper abs, because you have so much chest and shoulder and stuff like that going on. You gotta, you gotta average it out the landscape. <clears throat> if you want, if you want to think about it like that. So if you, I, I don't, I didn't see the score sheets. Did anybody see score sheets? I didn't see yeah. score sheets. How, did? how close was it? No, I mean straight first, straight second, straight third. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, I feel like he did some good things. He brought his weight up, and I think with the with the big weight gain, that's probably brought a little bit of the blurriness a little bit mm. for Quentin. But he knew it was going to be, you know, I thought he was going to do that, and then even try for the the show in in. And what is it? What's the next one coming for was Canada? It, is it Vancouver? Vancouver. Huh? Yes, the next one for you. But he's going to shut it down and go uh, get a, a good little <clears throat> break from all the everything you do for, get ready for a show. Mm. And then uh, he said if there's something later on in the year he can pick up and do, then he'll do that. If not, then it's, it's going to have to wait till the next year. Yeah, I don't think he's going to do anything. If he's shutting it down now, I don't think he's coming back this year. It wouldn't, yeah. it wouldn't make a whole lot of sense because even I'd though read, I'd rather see him shut it down and and nah. and build, um, I I have invited him to come and <clears throat> come and get some work in, you know. I hope he takes me up on an offer. Uh -huh. I know he. Uh, so when I, you Chris, when you invite people to come train with you, is that a business help. or you just offer that to help? Just offer it to help. So you don't even charge him for that. No. So T, I I tell people maybe don't understand. They think maybe you just. Well, the thing is though. No, I mean the thing is, if I didn't mention it, then I'm not charging. About right. if I mention it and, and let you know how much it's gonna be, then that's different. Yeah, this, this is just for you know probably listeners just, probably the listeners probably don't know because they know you're a trainer and they know you get paid for what you do, but you but still that don't mean you I'm for everybody either. right. You still do <laughs> see when you see potential, you still look out for these guys, and this is this is what I like about you. Um, so okay, so for me, Quentin. Was I mean he was bigger than than New York, much bigger. He wasn't as sharp, but uh, you know as much as we praised him, Chris, <laughs> me and you both. 
I see exactly what Milos was saying back then. He's still size-wise not there yet. He needs more overall size, not only in the quads, but also in the back. You know, it's overall because he's it, so damn it, tall. It, it's not because he's not trying or whatever. I think because uh, it's so much real estate you got to cover. Right. I'm not saying he's not I, trying. He's obviously trying, but I think he needs a little bit more time. And he's still young. So, I mean, you know. I had, had that same situation, uh, Dennis, that I had a, you know, <clears throat> you have a white clavicle, you have like a, a broader thing to deal with. It's going to take a lot longer than a flex wheel or, or a, yeah. a, someone like Phil Heath to cover that area and thicken it out. Right. It just takes longer. So what would you say, I mean, how much, if if he does, if he gets the right training under the belt, what are you talking about, a year, year and a half? Yeah, yeah, like that. Yeah. Cons and consistently, then, not just too yeah. much, then it take yeah. a too much break. Not, not just a week, and yeah. then I'm going to take that, and, yeah, yeah. It take, and it takes... It takes time under that type of situation to, in order to, uh, and I always like refer to it as belts. Like if you start out at a white belt, it takes you a while to get to the black belt. You got to go through all the different belts. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Milos, what did you, what did you see? Well, okay. Because you and I had talked first and your first impression was of the pictures. And you uh, that's the same thing that you said. Like, uh, yeah, Quinton looks better and bigger, but still not, uh, you know, big enough. I mean, and, and this is what Chris is saying with the uh, narrow clavicles like flex or uh, uh, feel heat nope. or with the wide. We all like wide because that's like perfect structure. But like you say, if you're six foot, whatever, it's going to take some time to fill up. Everybody was waiting for Quinton to put that size because he took a year and a half off. It did not happen. So now that you're saying, okay, let's give him another year, year and a half. If he does the same thing, what he just did, would it happen? So I would encourage him, especially to, you know, accept your offer if you're gonna help him, you know, with some training techniques and everything else. He's a God-given talent mm. that that if he puts more size to his quads and a back, and then he kind of have uh, Derek Lansford softness through here. Mm -hmm. There was there was not a single striation on adults. There was not single striation on the on the chest. Mm -hmm. Those are two muscles that should be chiseled, striated. Anything you do, it, it's moving, right? So I didn't see that. Uh, for me, there was no contest. They say it was close between him and Akim. Uh, I analyzed a few videos. And actually, uh, there was a, like a live stream, and then there was somebody you know, doing it with the iPhone. And it's like two different shows. Here, everybody was kind of offish. Mm -hmm. Here, like, holy shit. So exactly what... Uh, yeah. Yes. is saying, like, you cannot judge by what you see, iPhone and this phone and whatever else, you have to be there. So you are the only one. I was, was going to tell you, I was going to tell you, because he did have some, you know, on that side chest, I was giving that to Quinn because he had so much big body up there. And Akeem was a little bit more totally sideways. And I just, I was just getting my eye drawn to Quentin on that that pose, and Quentin legs didn't look that small when you when you were there. Yeah, they but I'm from the side. I mean, Akeem's quads are fucking ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, yeah but they, okay, but listen, but it wasn't as ridiculous as it normally is ridiculous. Mm, mm. Yeah, but there's no way that uh, you can't that just say that that's the point. same dunk that when Jordan take off from the free throw line. So, and dunk, but so, it, but, it, but it wasn't the same look. Yeah, but check this out. So now we saw Quentin in Tampa two years ago, right, Chris? Me, me and you both. Yeah. Now, when you compare this this Quentin to the Quentin that was in New York or now in Toronto, did he get better? Yeah. Okay. He got better. You're the only one that can say that because you're the only one saw him in person. Yeah. Yeah. He's, I, th I think he's gotten better. When he was in New York, his calves to me was bigger than his upper thigh. <laughs> bigger than and that shouldn't be happening, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, it's happening. beautiful that calf is that big, but it's not the uh, size the and same he, size. Yeah, and he had a, he had a, he had a different on stage moxie that he didn't have in New York, hmm. or like he felt a lot better. He felt like he could feel his muscles and everything like that. Well, he wasn't he was in, he was in his like home that. country too. I mean, that plays a big, yeah. plays a huge role. I met his I met his mother in the audience and stuff, so. Uh, 
So hi to Mrs. Beastwood. Uh, she was there in, in attendance. That was cool. Um, Who got third? Uh, John Jewett. But John Jewett. John, 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 John was phenomenal too. But, but let's say Quinton actually was fighting for a title. He felt like maybe he got it, right? Uh, his stage presence, everything was good. I mean, uh, if you uh, analyze the videos, he's the tallest guy and he was still out angling everybody to create even more size. It, uh, that, that was uh, quite, uh, quite visible. Side shots that you said on the side shots that he turned around to create that thickness, still, you can't deny, I mean, Akeem Williams, side poses, side shots of side chest, Akeem is tremendous. As Dennis was saying, yeah, Akeem would lose from the back because the back double and back class spread, you know, he has these uh, issues. But uh, Clinton is not so dominant, you know, that, uh, oh, yeah, he can overtake him. Front double biceps, I mean, Akeem's arms. Akeem's legs and Akeem's arms are off the chart. And he has a quite a small waist. Now, you were saying that uh, uh, Clinton was losing uh, abs. I didn't see that. I mean, he has a, such a small waist and deep abs. That's his detail, and quads are his detail. He was no detail. Mm. I mean, I'm, I'm, I was saying his abs can use some thickness and <laughs> and stuff in development and on the serratus and oblique more so. Yeah. Okay, John Jewett. You you saw him over there. He was former two twelve. He doesn't look nothing like two twelve, right? Yeah. I, you know, I, he, he has a funny body as far as. He'll have a, like he, like he built, I mean, I know it's, that's the style of the competitors these days. They like to build the abductors up so much, but now I'm seeing this leg like this and I'm seeing the muscles like this. You know what I mean? Like yeah, when he, he locks on those serratus, the, 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 uh, the outer quad and everything, that strip is about this. The one in the middle here, the teardrops here, but then he got this leg like this. So to me, it, I don't know. It just like kind of was a little bit, I don't know, different for me. And then he hit this. Advice. Chris, he got this, Chris tried to be nice. It was a little bit different. <laughs> different. Odd. I don't know. That's I don't think that's the way they're building it. Yeah. And then I, I see this body that's big. I saw him walking to the uh, check-in time. Stomach is protruding. No way. Really? What? Are you talking about the check-ins at the registration? Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? Yeah, but we're talking about the show. I, I'm just, I'm, I'm just painting a yeah, picture. Yeah, but I'm not judging nobody off a of registration. I'm a picture for you, Dennis. Wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> Let me finish my painting. <laughs> okay, because I'm telling you, John Jewett is a master of controlling the abs and that small uh, on the stage. I'm serious. Well, you're not there, armchair couch coach. I'm there. <laughs> Hey, listen, listen. <laughs> like Dennis, I, I don't, I don't judge people going to the bathroom and letting them come out. Yeah. Or, but you yeah. are from the, you are from the couch right now because you didn't go. Then I mean, you're on the couch. Yeah. Chris, Chris, Chris had boots on the ground, so we got to get yeah. him. Yeah. <laughs> you can't challenge me now. Even though, even though he had a fucking almost start a war to get in. <laughs> Civil war. <Hey. laughs> hey, you never said that story. What, what happened? Let's. Okay, well, well, I, I'm gonna tell you because it's a doozy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so. That's a better picture. And then, I, and then okay, and then, the, um, Milos, you know, if you're a master of doing these things with your body, controlling the stomach, mm -hmm. he shows this body, and then he shrinks it down into this look. Right? Yeah. But you're not doing that the whole time you're on stage, then what? Yeah, yeah that's a, that's a no-no. That's You're walking course. around, you walk out of there with the stomach here, and then you can contract it down and fit it all in this little box. I get all that. That's great. But you got to keep that mindset throughout the time you're on that stage, and that's not happening. Hmm. See, yeah. that, that's a shocker for me because uh, I consider him one of those. He teaches posing and breathing and gluing the <laughs> stomach to the spine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He teaches yeah. that. And then... The lat spread, he's using his outer knuckle, or outer hand, or whatever he's yeah, doing. Like yeah, that. Yeah. Not a fan of that either. Me not it either. makes you look blocky. It makes you look blocky and like a refrigerator from the back. And you, even though you're filling out all these. You remember? Holes, you remember who started that? Who was the first well, one? I just seen it way back when Beefit magazine was out. I saw it because I, I even tried it a few times. 
But then I, be, I discovered that it's not the right way, uh, not the best way to do it. Why, it. why, why, why would guys do that? Is that because they're slipping with the fingers? They're no, slipping? they feel like they they can they make their lats look fuller and down push, low and push the waist in more, yeah. so to make it look smaller. But it, it don't actually push the waist, though. That's what I'm saying. It, it just well, you have you have your hand oh. that added that's basically added to the waist. Yeah. You know? So yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You add to the situation, making it worse. Yeah. And you think you're doing the best thing, and it's not the best thing. Okay, so fourth place was uh, um, what's his name? Came uh, out of Robin that. Stan, Robin Stan from Canada. Yeah, I didn't know who that was. I apologize. He placed also fourth last year. Oh, yeah. he did. Yeah, I know now. He, so his, his with the abs that spread apart. I mean, <laughs> right, right. It was different. <laughs> yeah, <they're not>. different. <laughs> Hey, let's stop criticizing everybody, man. Yeah. So no, I'm trying to show you what, tell you why and what what I saw. This is uh, what the thing I yeah. saw. I think him and Tim Budesheim, 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 Budesheim. Yeah, they were very very competitive. I think that Tim brought the good condition, right? Yeah, Tim just gotta he gotta work on some of his posing mm -hmm. for sure. He knows that. He knows that that, that, that that's his downfall. And he needs to. He needs to block out those abs as far as like get some ice cubes in there. Uh, did you talk to him? Did you offer him to come down for some posing? I didn't talk to him that much. He usually he usually says hi and he keeps walking mm. basically when he see me. I didn't really talk to him that much. I don't. I wouldn't mind helping in any kind of way I could, but I'm not here to you know jump yeah, on everything. Yeah, because he's he's a good guy. He's a hard worker. He trains. He does. He has his own gym. And called, he got it. He got to get some goddamn anatomy chart shit going on in his back to the bicep. I know. His back is his weak post, but he improved a lot. I mean, his back from two years ago was nothing. I'm talking about, like, I couldn't name the fucking different muscles in the back yeah. from him. Yeah. And I wouldn't yeah. be able to pump out this is this and this is that. But he knows. He knows. But he's working on it. So he's get, it's getting better. He's getting better. But he needs some help with posing because that is a make or break it for him because... He could be so much better if he would he got hit the shots right. Yeah. He has a big hard body up there. Just got to utilize it in the right way, I think. And then we have another guy that's... Um, Masan Mustafa. I mean, if he would be in shape, he would be a, a candidate to win this whole thing. But I think he was like the old Hassan again, not in shape. That's what it looked like uh, on, on, the, on the videos that I saw. So it's not the live stream, but I don't know Hassan, what it was. Hassan, Hassan. <laughs> Give it to me, Chris. Let me count the ways. Uh, All that muscle. You know I've known him for a while, right? No. i know known him for a long time. I met him in Kuwait mm. years ago before, <coughs> before all this stuff. And he he did a couple. He, I said, hey, you know, I was doing my camp out there. I said, come join us. This is no money involved, none of that. I was, I was making money with, you know, with some of these amateurs and stuff I brought out there. But yeah. Come on, join the camp. He didn't. He did. He went around. We did legs. We did. Uh, <laughs> we did some back. I think he came for another day. We did some posing. Did some posing, and then he he didn't come back in again. He vanished. Back he just yeah, vanished. Yeah. Yeah. I was playing Houdini out there, just making fools disappear. Like, <laughs> you. yeah. You but, don't see him no more. So, right? so what are you trying to say that he's not? Hundred percent dedicated to the sport. Well, you just you just gotta. I, I mean, gotta, imagine imagine this, Milos. Imagine you coming to the U.S. or wherever. Canada. You live in Serbia. You back in Serbia. You just let's start lifting weights, you know. And and John Brown, for instance, and Sean Ray and fucking Lee Haney would be in your town. They offer you to train with them. I mean, I would. I would sleep in front of their door, yeah. You know, yeah. waiting for the morning to. to yes. <laughs> so we came to the to the posing. He came there, then he left. But then he came back for just one posing session, did that posing, and then he left again. And then I never, we have never in contact about any type of training whatsoever. Yeah. Ever again. I mean, I I, I, I know him. I know him since he's on on the scene, but I I see him. Always has a great potential, super fucking big, everything. He has every body part, full round muscle bellies, but he just can't get in shape. He got in shape last year or two years ago one time for a show that he won, you know, and now he's back to where it was. His legs, I mean, I'm, I'm, 
I don't know what it looked like sitting there, but from what I saw, he was just like, how do you, how, why would you even get on stage? I don't know how, to be honest, I don't know, Chris, you can tell me. I don't know how he made first call out. Name. His name. Well, it's probably going to look better name, on paper. Name and expectations. Guys. It was yeah. a nice top six name wise. Would, would, you have, yeah. would you have him in the first call out? Oh, there you go. Well, I mean, I, I, I probably would have put him up there. I probably would have put say him. Hi to Matt. This Matt. But, up, but, but let me tell you, <laughs> I'm telling you now, some of these guys are trying to fake it till they make it with this gym workout shit. And it's not fucking panning out. That's like if you you pass the test at a at a you know at your college, but yet when you gotta get hired and go and make a do a some type of surgery, hmm. you don't and you, that shit ain't gonna trans, transfer into anything great. Yeah. And well, welcome to the show, Matt. We just uh, we just what's up, guys? Yeah, we just doing a little uh, uh, wrap up about the. Um, the um, Toronto Pro last last this past weekend. Okay. Did you follow anything from Toronto? Yeah, I did. I, I watched it. I watched all the shows. Okay. So do you watch a live stream? Uh, I did. Yeah. Okay. So because I didn't, and Milos, did, I think Milos, did you watch a live stream, Milos? I don't. I didn't hear. Yeah, that. I just get to all the videos yeah. afterwards. So now, from what I saw, I guess I saw a couple of videos from the live stream afterwards, and it just didn't look like most of these guys were in shape, to be honest. So, but as as Chris is saying, that it looked different from being there. You know? Chris, you were there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I don't know, Matt, if you've seen it, there was like uh, normal footage. Did everybody look kind of softish? Yeah. I think the lights it, wasn't that great. There's somebody with a different camera, like iPhone or whatever, and it was like concerned, like two week, two weeks difference in the conditioning kind of thing. It's like one well, of those Yeah, I mean, you're, you're always going to get that with an iPhone, though. I mean, that's you, you go to the Olympia and take pictures off the stage with your iPhone, they're going to be sharper, too. Mm. You know? So so my Olympia iPhone footage of Samsung was not correct? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I didn't say it. it was, I didn't say it. It was correct in your phone, Milos. <laughs> it worked. It worked for your phone, so... <laughs> no, but but for real. So, Chris, where were these guys in shape? Was anybody in there that was in shape? In shape, top to bottom, front to back? In the open class? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, bikini, bikini. What, what am I talking about? It could have been 212. I'm not talking about bodybuilding here. It could have been 212, but that 212 was, woo. The 212 was always better conditioned than the open guys. It was sharp, sharp. So, in um, the open, in the open, who really impressed you the most? All right, somebody yeah. got to think that long. It's got probably the nobody. Top two, the, top, the top two guys. The I top mean, two? Even, yeah, top two, top three. So, most. okay, so straight question. So compare Quentin from this Saturday to New York. And I'm not asking this question because of you, Matt. I'm asking the question because I, I know well, he well, wasn't in the same condition. Oh, it's, it's, re it's relevant bodybuilding topic. I, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. Le leg was bigger. You know, like I said. You Which know, one was better, though? Well, I mean, he, I mean, he had less competition this weekend, of course. Uh, I mean, okay, I, let me. Let's get into it. Let's, let's get jump into it. it. Let's get let's jump into it. Yeah. If you have, if you, go ahead. Let me ask you this: You put Akeem, and you put that version of Quentin in the New York Pro. Where do they place? I think Akeem. I think Quentin would beat him. Condition wise. No, well, nah, I can't say it. I, 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 I watched the live stream. I can't I can't say it. I can't really say it. Okay, I, I'm gonna say it. Okay. Here's Before. the thing. Here's the thing. Okay. Nah, there there's nah. a couple of lines when they did the, the comparison from shot, you see a bigger body. You know, it it was the lines in the, the Terry's major, Terry's minor area, you know, Romboy area. Was that a little bit finer line? Yes. The size wasn't there though. But you can get some finer line cuts, yeah, but uh, the size would have been better to have that. Mm. So, but answer, to answer the question, Chris, you were with, you were in New York and you were in Toronto. Answer Matt's question. I want to know what you're saying because you were there. I wasn't. Once again? So the, question, the question was, if you put both, Hakeem and, and um, um, Quentin. Both the, versions of Quentin in, in the New York lineup. Where are they placing? Because in, in my honest opinion, and I know this is the elephant in the room, 
Yeah. I don't think anything would have changed. I think Akeem, Akeem, this is nothing against you. I think you would have been behind the fifth place guy in New York, and then I think Quentin would have fallen right well, after that. I don't think. I don't. I don't know if I. I don't think I. I see because those guys know Akeem, and that wasn't Akeem's best look for sure. What's happening? What's going on with Akeem's back? I mean, it's. I can watch this in the last three years. It's getting. It's getting higher and higher. It's like almost. <laughs> it, it, it almost yeah. kind of like Rami, but this. When I saw Akeem's back this weekend, I thought that made Rami's back look so much better. Kind of like Rami. I mean, no, it's, I think it's even worse than Rami right now. What's okay. happening? What's going on? Yeah, here's, here's the thing. So his, I, I, I did some posing him back. You know, maybe like nine, ten years ago. Even, be, even when we was in Kuwait, he was his his Christmas tree was here, right? And then, then now the Christmas tree is like this. Mm. So right. the lats and everything is coming up the back. What does that mean, though? What's happening here? I, I, mean, I think it's the atrophy. What do you think? Uh, oh, obviously, it's atrophy. <laughs> I know, but that's what, not the question. Mean, but why? 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 What's what, making it happen? What's making it happen? It's, it's, I would I would imagine it's nerve damage from something. From what? Oh, both sides. The only way you can not, the only way you can nerve damage it out, and nerve damage. You know, I've had nerve damage. I'm nerve. I am nerve damage. Still damaged. <laughs> I'm still damaged. <laughs> that's that's a different look. I mean, you can. I mean, that means the blood flow is not going to be able to go to that area and that and that muscle. Yeah, but tissue. that's what it looks like because it's literally his yeah, muscle is only. Yeah, and, look at, look you, at but a lot of guys, a lot of guys are pinning their backs, and that's and they, but nobody pins it that low. But they're trying to get size that way. But guess what? In the long run. That tissue is gonna disappear, and yeah. there's a lot of guys gonna have to uh, retire before they should have been able needed to retire because of the simple fact that you, that substance is not gonna to yeah. But Chris, Chris, that muscle. I, I see what you're saying, and, and it, it makes sense. And you see this, and you can lot, go down a line you through this, the history. You see this with a lot of people, especially in their calves and stuff. But yeah, who who would like me just said who would pin so low and for what? Nobody. So many, so many. Hmm. Am, I, am I right, Matt, or not? Am I wrong? I, think I, I would say up, upper lats, yeah, but I, I haven't seen. Yeah. I mean, I personally, I'm being 100 percent honest. I don't know guys going that low. Me not either. Upper lats, okay, yes. But, I was. A, I'm a big me, uh, advocate. I've seen. I've That's seen. I can tell you guys this too, from from my perspective, with with the nerve damage. So I actually, I right now, I completely have lost my inner gastroc on my left leg. Yeah. Um, and I did a, uh, a nerve induction study on that because it's kind of been like this process that's happening. And I worked with a, a sports doctor who is very involved with bodybuilding. And what he thinks is that he's calling it a crushing injury in the back of my knee. And what he thinks that's from is from a lot of loading flexion with knee sleeves on in the bottom of a squat, bottom of a leg press. And it just keeps driving in over time. And that's what shut off because I, so a nerve induction study, you're basically getting electrocuted down your nerve from your spine. And then where you stop feeling that is where it shut off. So I have pulse all the way down my left hamstring, all the way through my spine and the back of my knee to my inner gastroc is where it's cut off. So something crushed that. And then that's where the stimulus stopped there. Now, obviously, I don't think that there's that crushing injury happening in the back unless it's a pinning issue. Um, but for the calves specifically, I know for myself, that's that's what it came from. So I really started to notice this from 2019 to 2020. You never pinned your cab before? Never. Never. <laughs> so, there's people that do it, right? It's a painful thing. Beatles, come on now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So but you I'm know there's people that my, uh, hey, wait. But you know, you know people do that, though, right? Right, man? Hey, it's super painful. Oh, well, yeah, for sure. Okay. And then they're going to start getting damaged there. And then the muscle's not going to be there. Because we saw a lot of people... Look like penguins. Then they they trying to they walking through the sand. They're gonna sink in the sand. I know, but and, we we talked about this and and yeah, and they're but, bodybuilders. But I also also said that if that's the case, then we should see people walk around with no asses left because they are atrophied. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a different muscle though. The different yeah. muscle though. Those other muscles are very different, and, and like your calf muscle is a lot tougher than your the muscle in your chest because you you bounding and you walking and you jumping all your life on these muscles, a tougher muscle. So if we in, in the, if we were like in an island and we got stranded, I'm not going to start with your calves, uh, uh, Dennis, because your calves are going to be the tougher meat. I want that filet mignon, which is probably going to be up in your, your side of your thigh by that 
or there or <laughs> or maybe you're, yeah, but <laughs> to that point, then maybe what your is, last what is mighty your last dentist or something like that. Go, go ahead, go ahead, Matt. I said to that point, then wouldn't your calf be more resilient to to actually not have atrophy versus something that's more tender? No, but you bounding on them all the time, dude. It's like, but when the, you say all the time, are you talking the, the every day? You talking every the day? Performance, the performance level on those are gonna be different, right? Okay, Chris. Everything. Chris, different, no, different uh, question. What did you pin most of the time? Me? In your career. I tried my, I told you before, I tried my glutes and my butt was bigger than most. So Okay, so never, so you just did the glutes, nothing else? I know I did not do the glutes because I, I got shocked because it, the first time I tried it, it shot fucking blood all the way across the damn. Okay, wall. so what did you pin the most? So I went shoulders and my arms. So I had, did, did you shoulders and arms? Did you experience for that reason? Did you experience atrophy? Now, are you? Can you tell you look at yourself now, and say, "Oh right yeah, now, I can see I shot my fucking it shoulders." Scar tissue in my shoulders now. Mm -hmm. To where no, it's probably no circulation through there now. But but uh, when you but when you look at your shoulders, do you still have capped shoulders or are the shoulders gone? Gone. Gone. Yeah. Gone. Long okay. gone. So you speak gone from gone. so you speak from experience. Only, yeah, from experience. The only thing there is the scar tissue. Hmm. That's the okay. only thing in my shoulders. Well, and these Matt, guys can experience that because then your your circulation in my arms, all that stuff start to affect you as you get older. Oh, uh, so you feel it in your arms? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the yeah, circulation. And then that's okay. the circulation so, is needed. It's so, necessary. So what's the message to the young bodybuilders coming up right now? Okay, and also, how about this, Dennis? Are you doing it for your cycle or are you doing it for spot suiting purposes to look a certain way? Because you got the Olympia coming up, and you want to spot up for the for this audience. You want to be in the audience looking big, so mm -hmm. you want to spot around your body. There's two different ways that people go about that, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Yeah, so, uh, just one is you here. just need to put the uh, anabolics in one way or another, right? So you want them in, and the other thing is if it is uh, like site injection, it's gonna create the difference in your in the muscle that you're taking. But you can't fake it till you make it. It's not gonna, uh, and I'm not talking about the synto or, or site injection bullshit. You know, sure. about sure. like, no, Dennis, like when we talk about your triceps, uh, outer triceps that you you pin, it, it looked a fucking. But of but uh, to my own defense, okay, mm -hmm. I didn't I didn't do it because I needed more triceps. I did it, and it's only Vinstrol, the water-based stuff. Vinstrol, I put that in there because I was in pain everywhere else if I would put it somewhere else in my glutes. I didn't. I never shot my shoulders, basically. Never. I did it maybe twice in my whole life. And I saw, I saw you had some some lines in your shoulders when you hit. I, I, I didn't shoot. Yeah, I didn't shoot my. Listen, I shot. No, I saw. I, I saw it yesterday at the the show at the Arnold Classic 2001. I got a, a video of you. And you went like this, and it was some nice lines. <laughs> I, shot, I shot the side of my lats, and I could never do it. I never did it myself. I always had to use someone to do it for me. That's why I missed because more you, shots you than high, I probably took. You had high lats, Dennis, but they didn't roll up your back. Yeah, I, that's what I'm saying. I only used in the side <laughs> of the lats. I didn't go anywhere else. They didn't, didn't roll. But there's the other places in the middle traps. I see a lot of guys shooting the traps these days. Well, uh, you uh, guys are way ahead of me because I never because in a million that, years. I, I've never heard of that. Yeah, honestly. you're way ahead really? of me. I never, never heard your, someone shooting their traps. I never, never in a million years even thought about it going anywhere else. So my eye is that sharp and you guys are not that sharp or I'm just that crazy or I'm... I'm, I'm no, I, I've in. seen somebody... Oh, just, you already know you're that crazy. Yeah. No, I'm 40 years in. So <laughs> I've never seen the top of these shoulders. Are you serious? Are you what, serious? What's it next to, Wait, next you never to... seen the top of the tris triceps being shot up, Matt? No. Honestly, ever. no. None of your guys I, ever I, did that? I, I'm also probably not even looking for it, but I, do you, I've never... Chris, <laughs> you don't think Chris, none of your guys do, ever done it, do, Matt? Do you, huh? do you know any of his guys doing it? Point them out. Well, I don't know. I mean, I see what I what I think, but I can't. But Chris, I Chris, Chris, a lot of times you would you would accuse someone. 
of being shot up when maybe he's not really shot up. Okay. Just because it okay. looks better. But I just know for a fact that their workouts is not warranted to make that body look the way a lot of these bodies are looking through looking at them hey. work out. If I'm looking at them work out, I'm going, holy shit, they fucking kill okay. them. Chris, you're good friends with uh, Dorian, okay? Yeah. I do remember one time when he was saying he was shooting everything in the lats. But then instead of how Dennis did, sit down, relax his lat, and somebody shoot uh, up, uh, Dorian said he just lift the arms and... <laughs> That's not, I, I couldn't do that if I could. If you pay me for it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, then, and then I heard... The I wasn't Dennis, there when he did these things. I did in the trap. Who? I said, this is even impossible. So this guy from... People are doing the calves, dude. Let's just be Well, honest. listen, I, I have no doubt that there's crazy enough people out there that shoot every fucking muscle. Every damn thing. I, I have no doubt. It's, okay, I, wait, wait, I wait, wait, wait. I couldn't personally, hold on a second. I couldn't personally now say that's the one that's shooting his traps. Well, yeah, I, I know one guy who's on the internet, but he's, he's not competing. This guy's okay. doing, who's okay. doing, who's doing wait, podcasts? You, you, What's the guy? Who is the guy that's doing the podcast with, um, I don't look know. like a, look like, look like traps at the shoulders only, and this guy is like so. Of why would you, so you would think he's the only one? I just the only one that I can point out. Okay, but there's other guys like you're. The, the, I'm just saying. Who? Take, give me a name so I can. I don't want to. I don't want to blast people out, but there's many guys. Well, you are blasting them out I without saying. Day. Hey, I'll I mean, give you the name. Matt Jansen is. I've seen some guys that Matt train like that. I've seen some. Like yeah. be honest, I've seen it. Yes. Hey. Like it's not fucking from the workout. It's not. I'm so, telling you. Yeah. Let, let and me they play, and they place they place okay, but the, I don't think the judges know what they're looking at. Oh, so now you now you also accusing the judges to not seeing it. I, I so we all dumb. And I'm willing. Judge. I'm willing to go to Pittsburgh and have a meeting, <laughs> Matt. We don't and know. Let's point some shit out See? because it's not going to help the sport in the long run. Okay. They're going to be right. canceling their damn career. Got it, Chris Milos, yeah. Matt. We just yeah. we just coming along for the ride. We don't really know what the hell is going on about bodybuilding. Exactly. You know? If you want to know, we gotta ask Chris. Yeah, we he, are will, misinformed. he will point it out for you. Hey, you can be sarcastically joking no. all you want, but you know it's a problem. And these guys are not the guys are thinking they could fake the funk, but it ain't gonna pan out when they go to stage and go up oh, there like oh, this Chris. is my shot up muscle. I'm gonna win some shows. Anybody like, on the Olympia stage <laughs> in the open that's shot up? To the point where, okay. where you can see it. Anybody on the okay. Olympia stage? The Olympia stage, yeah. Trapezius, um, two. But it makes you look ten pounds bigger. But yeah, I never but, shot. But yeah, but who would you? Not, I never shot mine up, and I think that people placed ahead of me that were shot up for a trap. I love, I love flex, <laughs> shot up, and placed ahead of me. But if they wasn't shot up, they wouldn't place ahead of me. Oh, you talking about Flex Wheeler? Yes, oh. he was shot up. You well, know it. Well, you know that. Yeah, uh, I, I can't tell. I can't tell. I can't, you know, I you can't. Know, tell Milos, you can't tell. Cancer. You can't tell Milos. No, for 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 uh, flex. Uh, no, Milos? people, people, people. Chris, I'm not. I'm not being uh, ignorant. I'm just asking you a question. I yes don't. Or no? I, I've seen one guy do it. I want to ask your integrity right now. I want to know: Do you think people are doing this or not? Absolutely. Absolutely. Absolute yeah. Okay, I think it laughable. Is. I think laughable people are doing this. I I don't know of anybody legitimately that's shooting up their traps. That's top eight in the Olympia. How about a lot of how about a lot of muscles? A lot of muscles are being shot up. Probably, the, probably, oh, yeah. yeah. I yeah, mean, Chris, the, Chris, the, you get to the point at one point where you don't know where to fucking put the shit no more. So you have to rotate. Hey, I can see hey, that. Here I here understand. But I don't think there's a lot of people putting everything in, say, in in their trap hey, to make their hey, trap I, I look, I guarantee you this. look a certain way. Yeah. Okay, Chris, Chris. I guarantee you, Matt, Dennis, and I, if we have to shoot any muscle, probably traps would be the last on the list. Yeah. Even in the back of the traps, dude. Even like in the middle of the <laughs> trap. <laughs> who has these ideas? Who, who, yeah, come, who came up with that shit? There yeah. was, it, had, anyway, it, had to be, it had to be in Chris's era. Who, yeah, who, who, well, I, I traced it. I did some research, Dennis, and I traced it way back. But you know what? It comes to, I traced it way back. That, that, way back before that, that, but, Double blind university. But that brings me back to, anything. that brings me back what Melvin told me one time. And I told you that. Yeah. He told me that you were shooting all your back, too. He, he was doing it was for not. you. He said he was Bring doing it on. for you. Bring him on. Okay, okay. Let's, next time, hey, next time. Because I was the last, I was the last, 
tamper with physique in the fucking... I, my, listen, and I did never see anything that looked like it was tampered In my with. era, yeah. And I don't train my guys to do that either. I, mm. I, I, got, I got some of the cleanest guys. Like, look at Brianna. Brianna looked like that. Nah. Even though the guys he's going against is doing All shit right. like that. Let's focus on... Let's, can we focus on our guests a little bit now? Yes, yeah, uh, please. Please, that would be nice. Yeah, yes, yeah we have finally got Matt on. It's, it's, it's been a while. I'm trying to get him on for a while because... We yeah. need to we need to know we need to hear what Matt has to say about all this when it comes to bodybuilding. You got um, two top guys, two top. I don't even know. Maybe it's more than two top guys in two twelve and in the open. You know. Yeah. Um, let's let's go to the two twelve first. Okay. Um, Sean lost the Olympia last year. Yeah. Um, it was close. I don't think he was. A run, nobody ran away with that title. I don't think Keon was. You know. Crazy better. Do yeah. you did did you agree with the uh, with the result last year, or do you think it was it was? Well, I'll, I'll say this. I um, I mean, obviously it was tough. You know, winning the title, losing the title to Derek, getting it back, losing it again. I mean, that was that's it's emotionally tough. Mm. I know that going into I, Sean and I have a very unique peaking process that we've done so many times, you know, even talking to after the show, talking to Tyler, Tyler was like the first to say, it. he's like, Hey man, you guys have nailed it. Like literally six years in a row. And this one was just a little bit off, you know, and that whole week I knew it like his, his response and, and what I'm used to seeing from him is just so textbook day to day. It's almost like I can just like predict it before it happens. And this time it just wasn't happening, you know? And, and mm. finally I want to say like, um, I'm one, when I coach guys, I try to keep as much stress out of the, the peaking process. But I also think, you know, just how I operate internally at some point, I need to like share my heart. Um, so I think this was like Thursday during the day, Thursday with Sean. I'm like, look, bro, like, I'm sure you know it. Like, you're just not responding how you how you did. You know, so we needed to make some changes then to try to even pull him down further. And those changes didn't hurt him. Um, but he just wasn't his truly best version of what we had brought year and year and year um you know going into the the show you know and and sean he had he had just recently moved you know he had some you know, some business opportunities that i think were taking some of his like mental capacity um so it's just like it just wasn't the perfect storm last year and i i know that wasn't sean's best physique on stage do i think that in my opinion he was um in a place where he still could have won yes but i also think that you know him being the champ we left the door open you know and, and this whole year has been about just refinement of making sure that we correct what didn't happen again last year. You know, and a lot of that goes down to just reducing stress in his life. Um, and then also too, like we don't need to push for size. You know, when Sean won, uh, Bill, Bill and Tyler both said that last year when he won last year, that was uh, Bill specifically said that was one of the best physiques that he had judged since Ronnie Coleman, you know? So like, we don't need to do things other than rebring that, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that is the goal of us all this year is just rebring that look. I hadn't, uh, we haven't driven his weight up at all. You know, that hasn't been a focus. We've been keeping him leaner, you know, just making sure his training performance is good, making sure he's recovering good. But like, we're just like, you know, correcting the few things that went off last year. Um, and then just, you know, really focused on bringing him down, you know, into that low one seventies range is where he's like deadly, you know, and he doesn't have to be any higher than that. Right. Because he was at 184 at one point, right? Yeah, I think like 184, 183 is where he ended up. Yeah. Um, you know, but like let's like going back to the Legion, which he, the Legion he won after he lost the Olympia. Right. He was 174 there. I think at the Olympia the next year when he won again, he was 175.8 or something like that. So like that's where he just – and the thing about Sean is his muscle density and his fullness – the, the leaner he gets, the more it just pops and just, you know, comes off of his frame. So, you know, that's really the focus of this year. We've already started prep. You know, he's fully in prep right now. Um, and we're just, you know, trying to correct those few things because I had some pretty heart to heart conversations with the judges after the show. And I was like, hey, just like, you know, shoot me straight. Like, is this a is this a title that has been lost forever? You know, or is this something that we can regain when we do the things that we need to do? And they said very much, you just need to, You didn't bring Sean's best. But Sean's best is is still one of the best in the world, if not the best in the world. You guys just need to, to bring that back. Yeah, and I think that so. Keon Keon his track record for condition is not great. You know, right? And do you he, think it's a matter? Do you think it's a matter of overfeeding or or too much food to make his to add a stomach protruding like that? Honestly, I think it was more a, a stress response uh, because I don't I don't feed him heavy. He doesn't need to be fed heavy. 
Um, I don't I don't overload him by any means. And he, even because, of, like I said, that Thursday conversation, we even pulled back further. But yeah, I'm very aware of the, the stomach issue that he had on stage. Uh, heavier, I, yeah, I think because he's heavier, I think that's a problem. If he comes down back to 175, I think the waist he, will be in. Yeah, he has no issue. Yeah. Yeah. And he and he's probably super super motivated to bring to get his title. Now, Chris. Back. Now, to your point, I I would say that I overfed him during the off season, but it wasn't like a peaking overfeeding issue that accentuated oh, right. his bit section. Right, right, right. But that's, yeah, that's what I mean. At some point, yeah. At some point, I mean, you have if you have a stomach wall only so long, I mean, so much food you could put in there, and without that thing going, you know, this way on you. Correct. And you know, my my last even with, with my body, I had a longer torso and a longer stomach to work with. But I still, my last four weeks, even if I was instructed to use a certain amount of money, uh, money, <laughs> eat a certain amount of food, I was still not trying to push my stomach wall out that that far, just because I know I don't want to be you know having that look when I go on stage. Right. Well, listen, with, with everything being said, I think that uh, Sean was considerably better conditioned than Keon anyway. You know, so I I if you are judging conditioning, right, and we were just judging, uh, I think it was uh, uh, Sean by, a, a, you know, landslide. Anyway. I don't think, I don't think some of his trademark shots, uh, Milos, when you come in here like that, that's like a that's like a knockout blow for... for uh, yeah, but for six years in a row, Sean was probably... Most conditioned guy on the planet Earth, when you think yeah. about it, yeah, yeah. So, so you know, he was kind of maybe penalized for what he brought for six because conditioning alone, he beat Keon. I mean, there was not even a question, right? But Keon yeah. had that uh, you know beautiful structure that he's always going to have. Uh, yeah, I, I'm glad that Sean is refocused. I think that he is like you know diamond you know, of our industry and uh, everybody loves him. So, yeah, uh, I'm glad that the judges are saying it's not over. It's still a very much uh, a game. Yeah, and Milos, to your point, too, and this isn't like a what was me comment, but, like, if you really look at, like, my two top guys, like, they both, I, I feel like every year it's it's always an uphill battle, you know, because with Sean, structurally, he's never going to be the biggest. You know, we're, we're fighting the, the wage, the, the weight gap, you know, between his 170 and guys 209, 210, 205. And then with Nick, you know, structurally, we all know that he's not the, the best. He's not the prettiest. So it's like it's always like we're always having to just be better, you know, and, and that standard is, is, is very high for them because of like the structural or or flaws that they might have. You know, so, again, I'm, I'm super confident in both of them, but it's never like I go into these things like if we leave any room. It's tough, you know. Okay, but you you have you you know your two top guys. But what what did you what did you or how did you consider or feel about Quentin's line uh, in this in your mindset? Like, do you feel like the do you, what do you, what do you, like? I don't know. That's the elephant in the room for me. Is like, what do you think went wrong with Quentin's look? With Quentin, okay. So from New York, yeah. Um, so for me, I, as, as soon as the show was over, we had a lot of conversations and I was the first to admit that I feel that he was better in Texas two years ago than he was on stage, um, in New York. That didn't sit well with me because again, I think my reputation as a coach is, is two things. It's the, the progress that I can do with my guys in the off season and then my ability to peak them, you know? So I was very transparent with that with Quentin. Um, that being said, I think that we didn't align on the direction that he wanted to go and, and the time frame that he wanted to do it in, you know, because like me just being completely tra transparent, I mean, some people that don't like me are going to take this and ride with it, but I wouldn't have been proud of that physique, especially from the back Quentin himself, he's not posting back shots. He's not posting stage back shots from Toronto. Um, I wouldn't have been proud of that look that was represented and the timeline represented. So when it came to Quentin and you know, us assessing things because initially he was going to go to California. And I said, Hey man, like within the changes that you need to make going to California, I don't think is in your best judgment. You know? And he's like, well, I for sure think that I can be 270 in, in Toronto and I could be 280 on stage by the end of this year. And I said, with where you're at currently and the, and the actual tissue and maintaining hardness, I don't think that's realistic. Um, and you know, and I, that's where I think we kind of went our separate ways. Um, but again, in terms of, of his look in New York, it wasn't what I expected um, by any means, you know, and I'm not proud of that look. I'm not proud of my job that I did, you know, to bring that look. 
But if we want to compare both looks, I really wouldn't have been proud of the, the Toronto look. And that's why I brought it to you. Like, yeah, sure, he placed well, but he placed better in a lesser lineup. And he placed, like, his conditioning, especially from the back, washed out through his abs. Like, those just things that I, I just don't align with from a coaching philosophy. Now, granted, mistakes happen. You know, and like I said, I, I went right to Quentin after the show. And I said, hey, man, like, this wasn't my best work, you know, and I apologize for that. Well, well, how do you think that happens if you've been watching from the last year and a half? How do I think it happens? Yeah. Well, it still that still was our first process going through start to finish, um, and I and I really <laughs> am. How do you react? When I, I'm a conditioning guy, you know, so and I really was judging a lot of his images off of his back shots because that's where he holds his fat, you know. So yeah. I really was looking at from a conditioning standpoint, and I also expected going into the show him regaining fullness at a level that he just it just didn't stick it, uh, it didn't regain yeah my, my judgment on that one and, and i actually uh clinton asked me you know on instagram and i, I responded to him you know I, I think of course you guys were chasing condition and exactly what you're saying probably you didn't see to your level of satisfactory condition and you keep digging and dig, keep digging but his height and his structure you know, he probably became catabolic to the point that he could not uh, uh, regain that fullness. I mean, conditioning-wise, when you look at the dryness and leanness, of course, uh, New New York was way better, way better. If you if you're gonna look condition dryness uh, standpoint, but with his structure, this is when you trade off. Yeah, you know, I told him. Of course, I think that he needs to fill up, even if he loses a little bit of conditioning. For that structure, that would look, you know, much better. So, yeah. But which look would win? Okay. So, Matt, I, I'm going to ask you that. Uh, Quinton, New York, Quinton, uh, Toronto, on the stage at the same time. Conditioning, of course, goes to uh, New York for for uh, my judgment. But uh, who who wins the show? I guess it depends on who's judging it. You know, I mean. <laughs> so I could I would honestly, because I believe that was Sandy head judge in Toronto. No, no, no. Sandy wasn't there. It was all Toronto. It was all Canadians. It's, it's Canadian judges. Okay. Um, I mean, I, I, again, I, based off of all the feedback from New York and the the focus on condition in New York and the focus on who they awarded based off of sharpness in New York, I would say that the New York look would still have have ran superior. Now, obviously, I could be biased in saying that, but like when he turned around, there was a lot of detail that was lost, and there was just body fat that was there, and water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I hear this, but but that's that question that always goes around. Okay, if you have to compromise something, yeah, but that's something. That's it, it, that's something. I think only Chris could really answer now because he saw him in in front yeah, yeah. from the stage on both shows. Because if I compare, if I compare from the videos. Then I would I, I would I agree with Matt, you know. And also too, guys, I, I'll I'll also say you have these you have the Quintons, you have the Andrews, you have the Sampsons, and they're it's almost like their judging criteria to Milos's point is a little bit different, you know. And they they don't have to be as sharp to get rewarded, and I get that, you know. And, and going back to the first thing I said to you, Chris, like, hey, I was off, you know. I, I do I miss a lot? No, I don't, but I'm not perfect, you know. And I and we miss. You know, and, and more than anything, it was important to me internally to go to Quinn and, and admit that and say that. Um, but I also think that, you know, an, an athlete and a coach needs to be aligned. And then I, again, like, let's just talk, we'll talk about this. Really, what's important to me is that the internal communication is there and then it's not just broadcasted out to everybody. But if he's reaching out to all of you guys, if he's reaching out to his friends, if he's just reaching out to every coach in the industry, you're going to get infiltrated with a lot of things that you might need to hear, you might want to hear. And then this whole process of this game of telephone is just going to spiral out of control, you know? So, um, again, ultimately, I, I still I'm confident that from a care perspective, um, I treated Quentin well and I gave him my best. That was our first time. It was a new body for me. It's a body that I haven't yet worked with. And I just I didn't get it right, you know, and, and I'm and I'm fully OK with admitting that. Mm. Yeah, so he had a year and a half. Right. And you see him gaining the size. Yeah. Uh, and you're known to put the you know major size. Uh, why do you think it, it didn't translate from Texas to uh, New York uh, with considerably much more size? 
I can't answer that. How much I mean, he- honestly, how much heavier was he in in New York compared to Texas? Do you know the exact weight? That it was it was right about the same. I think he was actually a pound less. So he was okay. So he wasn't really he, bigger. I think because right. he gained. I think because he gained so much in the off season up to like what was it like two thirty? Was it Matt? Uh, no, he was. He finished at I think really settled in around like three sixteen. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. At two thirty, I was like, I'm in three. So he was. So he was lighter in Texas. And yeah, which that's why I asked the question: Was he? Did he improve? You know, and uh, I guess that's why you probably told him that you like him better in Texas. Yeah, you no, I, I mean I was honest with him, you yeah. know, yeah. and also too. So another thing that happened, and this is it's it's learning body types and it's learning the individual's ability to push. We went. He spent some time with uh, Steve Weinberger earlier on in this year and Steve really encouraged him to go to a lower volume Dorian type split, which I am a huge proponent of. I'm, I've always been a huge proponent of that, but I think a, a, a large part of that being successful is the individual really truly being able to take the sets to the true brain. You know, if you are, if you are not able to do that, then you're not providing enough of a stimulus. You know, and then obviously as you go through a contest prep, if if the fatigue is being driven up and then your ability to to really get to that brink suffers even more, then that's when I think you're able you're gonna start to compromise the ability to maintain and hold tissue because in a low volume, you're not creating enough stimulus there if you're not driving those sets to true failure to create that. You know, so that could have been part of the problem too. And I addressed that with Quentin as well. I said, Hey man, like you might just be more of a higher volume guy due to the amount of individual stimulus that you can give to each individual set. That's not neither right or wrong, but that might be another area that we missed the mark on, you know, so we might need to rephrase that. So, you know, I, again, I, I had a lot of internal conversations. I don't think we need to air all that out here, right. um, but I also, I'm just being very like transparent with you guys about the conversations that I did have where I, where I missed, but I was also trying to assess because at that point we were still working together and I did want to see him improve, but I was also trying to give him a realistic timeline of which I thought the improvements could actually happen to be quantifiable tissue and not just floating up in body weight. Yeah. Uh, on that note, uh, Matt, he didn't really communicate with everybody. And he sent me the message like, uh, why did I put him so low in my predictions? Uh, Chris and Dennis were praising him, and I, uh, I didn't see him in top three when they were going to uh, New York. So this is, uh, why did you see that uh, everybody else didn't see? And that, that's when I respond to him that, I really figured that he started being catabolic and then his leg size and back was just not being there. And uh, I know who he is competing against. I mean, Nick is a monster. Uh, the the Martin, Martin yeah. is a like thicker guy, right? So pound for pound, he would overpower him and, and stuff like that. You know, but anyway. I, I, think I, have, a question. I have a question for Matt. Because you know, we, we, we're good with Quentin. Um, Let's rewind. Olympia last year, a couple of days out, Nick uh, announces that he's he has to pull out. Yeah. And um, I'm sure you guys sat there at prejudging, watch prejudging. Now, Matt, I want to know what went through your mind when you saw that this is going to be a Derek and Hardy show. Sucked. <laughs> it's like, yeah. no. Because um, I had a conversation after, you know, and I remember I mentioned it one time and nobody gave me shit for it. I said, listen, I really believe an in shape, crazy in shape, freaky Nick would have probably walked away with the Olympia last year. Yeah, I do, too. I truly do. You know, the, the way that he looked going into that show, um, the, the prep, I mean, truly the prep was perfect, you know, and everything about it was perfect until those final few days. And even even like I, I was trying to keep him together you know and then his just his rate of swelling like i even believe with a torn hamstring he could have got up there for a little while until the swelling just kind of really took over because that's how good he really really looked you know and he was he was big and the condition was right where it needed to be and i mean that was that was a very very tough week for me you know i mean in, in both capacities of of having sean lose the title and then having you know a guy that you know is truly at his best sitting on the sidelines next to you and you're seeing what's happening up on stage that was that was a hard week so fast forward to the Arnold Classic, Arnold Classic Columbus. We've seen a, in my in my opinion, the best Hardy I've ever seen 100%. on any stage. Now, you yeah. as Nick's coach, 
we all know that Nick believes, he, he truly believes that he's going to win the Olympia. There's no doubt in my mind that he thinks and he does everything he's supposed to do. Now, you as a coach, you don't, when you see a guy like Hardy at this moment, that's it. What do you have to do? What does Nick have to do to beat that? Well, Nick still needs some more muscle maturity through his legs. I think that's one of the biggest things that he needs. Um, we still need to correct some things with his waist. You know, but but Nick and I, we had a we had a lot of really good conversations, especially in New York. We got a lot of time together. And, you know, even going into the show on Saturday morning, we both agree in full transparency that that hottie, that's the best bodybuilder in the world, in our opinion. Mm -hmm. No disrespect to Derek, but that hottie that was represented at the Arnold Classic right now, that is the best bodybuilder in the world. And if that same hottie shows up at the Olympia, it's going to be he's going to be extremely tough to beat. You know, so I think it's going to have to be a perfect storm of Nick improving his legs some more, um, really, really just being super sharp through the midsection. And then Hottie maybe being the version that he was at the Olympia and not this Arnold version. Mm -hmm. And then obviously, we're not even and again, no disrespect to Derek. Obviously, that's another whole animal that we have to bring into the conversation. But just specifically on Hottie, mm -hmm. that Hottie that was at the Arnold, that, in my opinion, is the best bodybuilder in the world right yeah. now. And Nick agrees. Yeah. And, and that's the way I saw it, too. And I... And I was looking at the screen doing the broadcast. So, and Milos, you guys saw it all from, you know, from right in front of the stage. It, it looked, it looked un unbelievable. It looked unbelievable. even crazier than Milos' cell phone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I actually, I had a great seat and I, I videotaped uh, everybody, including Samson and put on my Instagram and then also uh, Hadi because I was there. So, of course, I posted that uh, video right away you know, uh, for fans to see it. But Samson didn't like that idea that uh, I'm posting, you know, his enemy, you know, before the finals. It's like, oh, man. So <laughs> uh, I, I'm still a fan of the sport, number one. At that hardy, in that condition, needed to be seen. And I had a perfect seat in the house. Yeah. So I, yeah. I, 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 said, I said it right away. If this hardy would have been at the Olympia, it would have been... Pfft. Done deal. Done yeah, deal. Yeah. Lights out. So, yes, so, so where does Derry go from here? No one, and you know, I mean, some of the, all the expert, the top guys in this industry, they all have the same thought. They're saying that this Hardy is almost unbeatable. No. No. What does a Derrick do at that moment, knowing he has the same coach? He's going, to, oh, how hard is it as a coach, Matt? That's, am I asking you this question to motivate this guy? And to keep and, yeah. to, and to stay motivated, and because you somehow, somewhat have to split your time and your attention to both of these guys. Now it's easier for for Hani when it comes to Derek because he's in the states and Hadi is in Iran. He's not always right. he's not always there. But as soon as Hadi comes to the U.S., now this is you got to split your attention. There's nothing else. There's no other way. The yeah. 50, you know, 50 or and the 70 30. I don't think it can be 50 50 because I think Hardy stays, be, I know. I think Hardy stays with Hani. You know, it's I'm different. It is. He's coming from another country. He needs more help in certain things, you know. So, but how hard is it for a guy like Derek now to stay motivated and knowing that these guys are gunning for him? Yeah, I mean, I will say from, from my perspective, having two athletes in the same show, and let's not even talk about one and two, I'm just saying in general. And that's that's one of the hardest things like emotionally mentally for me because you know beyond a shadow of a doubt one guy's going to beat the other guy and then on the back end of that show you have to then care for the emotional needs first most often of the guy that loses and you know you have to assess that situation and you know even though your your heart might want to go celebrate in that in that instance you have to go to the loser first and console the loser and you know maybe game plan with the loser it's it's a very hard thing you know I actually we just had our grand opening here at the gym a few weeks ago and Hani was here and I got to spend some time with him and just kind of talk, you know, between him and I about like how he's doing with that, because it's, it's a very hard dynamic and not, not to mention again, I don't even have one and two, you know, I'm talking about just two guys in the same show, um, you know, and, and, you know, obviously with him last year, you know, the, the, the turmoil of the, the fan bases kind of like pinning each other against each other after the show where they couldn't even like post about it for a little while. And they had to do this like collaboration post, you know, so it, it's gotta be tremendously hard, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, as far as Derek goes, I, I obviously think that they awarded him for a reason and he needs to have confidence in that and just continue to do what he's doing, which is, is progressing every year. Um, I still think that he needs more muscle maturity, especially through his, 
chest through his abs. Um, obviously, his silhouette and the, and the front double and the back double is absolutely insane. You know, his side shots, I think, can come up more. And I, I do think that he's, you know, working on that stuff. He presented a very good look in Pittsburgh. Um, you know, so it's just I think I think he needs to hold the confidence that he was awarded the title for a reason and carry that in this year, you know, and, and obviously I'm not in his camp, but you know, if, if I were coaching him, that would be the message that I would be bringing him, you know, just to continue to refine what he knows he needs to work on, run his own race. He was awarded for a reason. And again, it, you know, the, the Olympia is tough because you have guys, you know, getting on stage at nine or 10 o'clock at night and it's hard to nail that look you know, repetitively over and over again. So I think that's where it can air in some guys' favor when you have these guys with these crazy silhouettes and the, and the fullness without having to over-accentuate the fullness like Derek has to help him. Mm. Hey, so you think that's a muscle maturity issue in his chest, but when he has all of that density and muscle maturity throughout his whole backside, it's like not a different, it's a totally different story? I mean, it could just be a con- like like how he's connected for years, you know? Like, I think it's a connection yeah. Because when we was training, he he wasn't totally connected through there like he should have been. Yeah, and I, I, that's yeah. I would say that's probably more of it, honestly. And I, by maturity, I just mean I think over time, more years of him training his chest, I would hope it would catch up. But yeah, I would say he connects better with his quads and his glutes and his back than he does his chest. Right. Yeah. Did you see any improvement from uh, last year to this year, Chris? With better. Just just compared to Pittsburgh pro, to guest posing. Um, he looked a bigger, fuller look. I don't, I, uh, you know, I wasn't, I didn't go to Pittsburgh, but he looked like from the Oh, so you did, uh, I thought you went to Pittsburgh too. I do think, I think Derek is as crazy as his legs are, um, and he's improved them year over year. I still think it's like his, his legs, his quads in the off season are very lean, but then like, they still seem to come down pretty yes. significantly. In That's the what I said. I was going to mention that too. He's just he still, that I was crazy. He's he's gonna, as, as soon as, huh? Road, yeah, I out. always say that he in off season his quads look fucking ridiculous, and when he start yeah. when, he, when he gets in shape, what is that? The first thing that goes is his quads. He loses he and loses like his quads. Right? Yeah. His medialis comes in a little bit. Like it's like that's what I see in him. Yeah, that seems to just fade pretty quick. Yeah. So well, I I think that I mean this is just what I believe. I believe that um, Hadi is on a mission now. Winning two Arnolds, I think he's this guy has been working. I think he hasn't missed a day. He's over there. I, we just don't see I, much of him because he's in Iran, and we just see how they celebrate him. But I think that this guy is on a serious mission. I think for him, this is like this is like this is like a war. You want to win a war, you got to go in with everything you got. And, I and think, that's the mentality that he has. Yes, and you could tell. Yeah. And and and, yeah. I mean, and we talked about this when. And um, I don't know which one it was, what guest we had on that. I think it was John De La Rosa. When you see him step on stage, you feel his energy. This guy is not coming out to be there. He's coming to win. And even John De La Rosa said, he, he, even when he's on stage and he sees this guy, he, they can all feel his energy. It's ridiculous, you know. He's, he's militant in his approach. Like yes. his posing is militant, yes. yeah. He is there to fucking fight. It doesn't matter. You can bring guns, knives, bring whatever you got. He's down, you know, and I like that about him. And I think his way of taking this sport really, really serious and being a professional is elevating a lot of other guys to do the same. Because at the end of the day, nobody knows really how he trains, you know. But we see some of the clips, and I think he goes all out, 100%. Yeah. Because oh, yeah. yeah. it, mean, it shows in the body. Come on, you, you, you don't get like this from taking it easy in the gym. There's no possible way, you know. Uh, Matt, w one thing. Uh, of course, yes. I'm friends with Nick, and I would tell him this myself personally. But, uh, You're a Nick hater. Stop it. No, 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 no. I love, I love yeah. you. Well, and I'll tell you my opinion. My, my wait, 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 wait. Chris, Chris said before you came on about uh, somebody that, okay, did not control the abs at the moments, right? You're on the stage, and then he loses. He told about know. John Jewett. Okay, doesn't matter. So, you know, for Nick, this is, this is what I was going to say, and, and I'm sure that Matthew recognized. 
uh, compare Nick's presentation and Hadi's presentation on uh, uh, Arnold Classic. Uh, Hadi, that has a wider waist that we criticize him for it, right? You know, had his waist disappear with the breathing technique and the holding it. Every turn he made, he made it the illusion. That you, you could never see nothing. On a Nick, he has a great deep abs and quite flat stomach, but he loses quite often unless the obliques out. Right. So th this is that making or breaking for him because every everything else he can lose if he tries it, right? Those shoulders and arms and everything else, even if he tries to fuck it up, he can. Yeah. But stomach, as you know, that the, the few people that notice and right away criticism, and that's why he is not, not a contender. So right. I don't know if you're, you're working on that one, but... Uh, uh, breathing, and, and when you change the poses, right, from front to side, there are the moments that uh, you need to be aware of, okay, when you can inhale, when you can inhale, but that's one thing that I, I would tell Nick myself, and probably when I talk to him, I, I would. But Milos, yeah. we, 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 we talked about this, and, and this was, yeah, maybe in New York, or maybe at the Pittsburgh guest posing, which was a fucking guest posing, who cares, but I, we always said, when Nick steps on stage, from the second he's, you can see him, he controls his midsection. I think he's just like Hardy, one of the guys that he loses a few times. I promise you. Yeah. Okay, maybe, maybe yeah. in yeah. New, maybe in New York, maybe. But do, but when I just look back at the Arnold that he, uh, the, well, he got the first one, he won, and the next one, want, yeah. when he got second, yeah. not a single, master. not a single time. So I think when Nick's in shape. He's 100% in shape. I don't think he has an issue with that because he knows. So we're, we actually, so I, I, I do think that you know the, the overall. Taper can be better. Um, we're, we're working on that. We've actually brought in, uh, there's a guy named, by the name of Justin King who's been helping Chris some, um, but just a super, super bright mind when it comes to breathing. Um, so, you know, working on, on proper breathing techniques and more of like almost like a, for lack of a better word, like a functional type ab routine with him. So a lot more plank positioning you know, and things like that to work on that extended breathing under tension. Um, so we are really trying to just break him down to make sure that the look that he brings at the Olympia is, is with all these things in mind. Because, again, I, I know, like, again, I, it has to be a perfect storm. Um, Hottie has to be a little bit off. Obviously, Derek is another just um, another person in and of himself. But I, I do truly believe that Nick can win. But we have to own what we have to do in order to make that happen. Yeah. You think Hottie needs to be off a little bit for him to, to win? Right now, yeah. Yeah, I, I see what he's saying. I mean, Hardy has to be well, Hardy. Can, you a, a Hardy of 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 from Columbus is going to be very hard to beat. It's going to be. Nick can beat the Hardy of Olympia. Huh? I think Nick can beat the Hardy of the Olympia. That 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 will, I can I agree with you because that's what I thought. I said, damn, if Nick would have been on that stage, you know, he possibly would have walked away with that title. This is what I see with Nick. Like he is dead set on. And methodical about how he eats, how he trains, each set, each whatever, and he's not he's not gonna want to do anything that's not going to be good for him moving forward, getting ready for you know the Olympia. And I I saw it in my own eyes. I was like, he is not about doing anything less than what he's supposed to be doing. From meals to, I mean, we're sitting there on a bunch of food there, and he was just like, "Nope, I got my, I got my meals." Nope. Yeah, but that's the that's the way it should be. <laughs> I know. I'm that's, just saying. That's what I call I'm a professional. Glad grabbing the fries and eating the this and the sliders. Yeah. He was like, "Nope." Even when I asked I, you, I said, "Chris, who impressed you the most in that battle for the?" You said, I "Nick." Said Nick, he takes that shit serious, and and that's why I believe what he says. I doubted him too many times. Oh, we all did. I said, I ain't doubting this I, guy no more. Once I, once I saw that he was how he was, and I said, okay, yeah. I'm not doubting no more. I'm not doing that he, no more. He doesn't have the best structure, but if if somebody leaves the door open, I promise you Nick he will is, walk through there. He is locked in as, as much you know, as individual can be locked in. Mm, he's all a time. real cyborg, I'm telling you. <laughs> I mean, to this day, as long as we work together, he does not eat a crumb off of his plan without asking me. You know, like... You know, I woke up Saturday morning, hey, man, you know, I'm about to come down and see you. Do you mind if I take my mom for breakfast? You know, most guys wouldn't even entertain to even ask me that. Right. You know, and he's kind of in this in this waiting period before we really, you know, drop off the Olympia prep. And again, he's not, he does not veer. But, how good, but how good does it feel as a coach knowing that this guy is going to do exactly 
what you want him to it's, do. It's it's the best security blanket you yeah. can have as a coach because yeah. so much of coaching is being dependent on somebody else to execute. And you, when you know that that person trusts you 100, percent you know, and the, and the communication that we have is locked in as it is, it's it's awesome. Mm. Yeah. It's going to be a good one. I think this year is going to be, well, it's not only 60th anniversary. I think it's going to be one of the most competitive Olympias in a very long time. And we say it every year. But now I'm seeing that the guys, and, and listen, we still hope that Samson finally nails it. You know what I'm saying? So because this could really be a competitive Olympia where potentially three, four guys could walk away with that title. And we didn't have this in how many years? We always talk about one or two. You know, last think, year, huh? I think Samson's going to look very impressive, man. I, I mean, I never saw him that big and impressive. Yeah, but must be big is not everything. It, so, I, know it's also, I know, I'm just saying, mm. just saying, I, I saw a lot of bodybuilders in my, my day. I'm just saying that was a pretty impressive Cause, look. Because what, what, what has to be on the mind, on Samson's mind, seeing Hardy, getting beat by Hardy in Columbus, and then getting beat by, not, not as good Hardy in, in England, but still good enough, but well, Samson, the message, if you don't get this message. Hey, listen, you know, Samson you know. has the best body. Let's face it. Yeah. Out of all people, he has the best body and he has a size. He just needs to nail it down and he would be a contender. Well, he's already yeah. a contender, top three. Well, he's know. going to wait. I mean, didn't that. didn't Derek say that these guys are just battling for third place? <laughs> he's going to wait on the 21st. This and month. This month. When are you going? 23rd. You going on the 23rd? 23rd. I'll be out there all the way till, till Dubai. I'm going to go to Dubai. When is it? What, what day is the Dubai Pro? 28th of July. July 27th. Ah, shit. I mean, ah, what? The 28th? Yeah. I'm in Germany. I could I could fly over. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. Hey, hey check me out. I'll see if you got a ticket left. <laughs> What are you drinking? <laughs> you want me to ask for a bottle for a ticket for you? <laughs> yeah, I don't want to go through the same shit you went through in fucking Toronto. <laughs> exactly. Hey, tell the story. Well, it came down to I had a client there in the show in, in Toronto, and she did very well. Um, Olivia Baines. So I'm, I'm like, okay. When it, the last minute, I said, you know what, it'd be better if I was there. I could be there with you backstage. I can have your, a certain calm about you before you go on, and I can see, you know, where you're at. Hey, do you need a little something or whatever? I can help you pump up or whatever. So we decided, she said, oh, okay, get a ticket, and I'll reimburse you. Okay. So I called the promoter. Well, I, was, I hit the, the Instagram. They said, give me an email. Call the promoter. Promoter. Ron, Ron, right? Yeah, Ron, yeah. I say, so he and his wife, the wife is yelling from the background, you know, over the phone, but I'm like, okay. Are you on the, are you, you had him on the phone? I had him on the phone. I said, okay, I need a room. I was wondering if you had any spillover, spillover room or whatever. Maybe I can get one of those rooms. Like you blocked a few rooms off for your people or whatever. I just want to know. So I said, I'll call you tomorrow. Call me tomorrow. Call me the next day. Say, okay, you got a room for you. You got to just give me your credit card number. I was like, okay, that's fine. Um, so I got the ticket, got the plane ticket. I'm heading to Toronto. I want to get so, to Toronto. So did you ask him for a a a, 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 car, a a ticket for the show while you have him on the phone? No, I didn't do that. Because Why not? I, I, you know, you. I just, I just, I just never dawned on me that that would be an issue, at all. Because uh, he know that I'm coming in late. He know I didn't. He didn't. He he know that it's not like I could have been given publicity for the show or anything like that on any of the shows that I was going to because it was a last minute thing. So I was thinking that would be, you know, just kind of like written in stone that I would need a ticket. Uh, but then, and he didn't say anything about it either, so I didn't think it was an issue. When I go to Pittsburgh, when I go to Arnold, when I go to Olympia. Yeah, but that, that's you and your country. Now you, you live and you're going to a foreign country. I don't expect anybody to be like this. With I, me. I understand, but what, what, when, did you ask, when did you call him or ask him about the room? Um, about the week of. To the, the week, week of the like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday? Yeah. Yeah, yeah you should have, and, if, and he got you a room, right? So he did help you out. Oh, I got the room. I know, but I, he did have a room blocked the, that the he opened. Management, 
The management freed up a room for me. Yeah. Okay. So, and, but you had you had him on the phone, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You should have asked him right there. Yeah, and then I, I said, you know, is there, is there is there any way to get a ticket or pass to get to the show? You know, I would have just cleared that right off the bet. You know. Yeah. yeah so, but anyway, would. so now you get there, and then you what happened? Get there, and then he's uh, I go to the the check in, and I'm like, okay. Um, Is there? Uh, how do I, how do I get a ticket, or what's what's the deal with the ticket? He said, "Oh yeah, well your your competitor has a free a free ticket," and I said, "Okay, but that's I I think that's for her husband," and you know I was just wondering if there's a ticket for me I could get backstage or whatever. And he's like, "No, you're gonna have to pay for a ticket then, or whatever." I was like. Hmm. I said, well, you talking? You talking to Ron at that time? To Ron, because yeah, yeah. he's, he's usually not that guy. He usually, he, he, I'm I'm not used to him. Yeah, it was he wasn't that guy apparently. You sure that's him? That was him and not somebody else. You with the glasses, the little. Does it, does it look alike? Right there. He's looking like right, right there. <laughs> some spots. Yep. Yeah. That's him. And uh, so then he he directed me to his wife. So I said, okay, and go to his wife. And uh, she's at the at the thing. I said, "Hey, so, you know, I spoke to your husband. I, I need a ticket. I spoke to your husband. He he uh, told me to come here, get one from you. He said I'm gonna need to pay for it. I said, and I'm gonna let you know. It's been 40 plus years. I never paid for a ticket, and it, this will be the first. So if y'all wanna you wanna break the record here in Toronto? Let, let's get it on. <laughs> to my in Toronto. <laughs> in Toronto. <laughs> and so." Yeah, so then we did that, and then... Uh, so they charged you? No, he wanted to, and then the, the, the oh. guy was going to charge me. The guy was going to pay for it, the, the husband. said, well, we, we could take care of it. And they said, well, let me call him on the phone. So she called him on the phone. And then she called him on the phone. Who, she or him? She called the husband on the phone. Oh, she called, she called her. Mm. And said, hey... What did uh, we say? You know, she talked to him. Blah blah blah. She come back. Say, I'm gonna get you a. I'm gonna get you a, a a pass. And I think it was like for one day, for one day or whatever. So I didn't use it for the amateurs, and I was just going back and forth, peeking around the corner at the amateurs to here and there because I didn't want to. I, I I just don't feel the need to pay for a ticket. I mean, I, I've dedicated my whole life to this damn sport. And I don't think that anyone needs to charge me for going to any show on the earth. I, I mean, care. I mean, at the end of the day, it's it's up to the promoter what he wants to do. He can do whatever yeah, he wants sure. to do. He pays sure. the promoter pays a sanction fee to the IFB Pro League. And, sure. And 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 you know they can do what I, I have my, me personally, you know, I mean, it, it, if it's not what it used to be, it used to be I walk you the know, line. It used to be you know who is who turns pro because there'll be one pro card a year. Now everybody turns pro. I mean. And everybody thinks because you're pro, they're going to get a free ticket to the shows. You know, if we would do that, we would have, we would make no more money. But there's, pro, there's people that turn pro and there's people who dedicate their life to the sport. Right, right, right. So, but it's, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's still up to the promoter. I'm a little, I'm a little surprised because I know, I know the guy that, from how I know him. I didn't think that this would be an issue to have Chris come here in the show. I, I guess, you know, but uh, I'm not losing. And nothing. then I said, and then I said, hey, so uh, you know, I'm in the media also. I work with Olympia TV. I'm also on the the, the Menace podcast. And we talk about things that go on. So we're talking on about it right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I am in the media. So hello, Toronto. <laughs> hey, Chris, if it makes you feel better, I paid many tickets. And Dennis, you know. We, we I'm not doing it. I already made up my mind. I bled from the eyes. I've been on the cross. And yeah. I came off of that thing. I'm still alive, and I feel like I, if, if that's the case, then I won't be going on any shows because I'm not doing it. 99% sure the door won't be for, for Olympia tickets one time. Ask him. What? I'm 99% sure that Dorian paid once for Olympia tickets. Oh, he won't go because they don't. He said he wasn't going to go because they. Uh, but anyway. The uh, are they wanting so, to charge him? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't he know. Wasn't gonna, he wasn't going to I can't, I can't. <sighs> yeah. He wasn't going to do that. I, I'm a promoter myself, so I'm not going to trash any promoters because, like I said, it's up to the promoter to do 
what he wants to do. You I'm know? just giving the information. This is the history. And this yeah, is yeah. I, I, f I hear you. I, I hear you. I, Chris, you can, you can come to my show anytime. I will give you a backstage pass. Thank I'll you. get you whatever you need. I'll get you a free water. I'll and get I you whatever you need. And I understand all the all the walk all the walk down the line things. I got my MPC card this year because they said they don't want anyone backstage that don't have any MPC card. So I'm an MPC current. Yeah, but, MPC. Yeah, but that doesn't count for pros, my man. See, you didn't know, I know that. I'm, I'm just saying they have amateur one day, then they have pros the next I day. I understand, but you are an IFBB pro. You don't need an MPC card. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I do need one. I had no, to, you I don't. Had, only N, only NPC competitors that are not currently with an NPC card for this year have to get an NPC card. Well, that most of contest, they didn't want to let me backstage unless I had an NPC card. Uh, yeah, they, I mean, obviously, I'm not a pro, but they, I have to do the same thing. Yeah, as an MP, <laughs> as, and yeah, I amateur. Yeah, I'm, I mean, uh, but IFB pros don't have to. But they, you know, not, I well, they maybe, maybe, uh, maybe you have to be a. Recently, maybe, it's an insurance thing. Maybe yeah, you have to be. Thing. You have to be a registered IFB pro. I had still. an issue with the, uh, with the, uh, with the sword and everything. Yeah. Well, I, I, yeah, I know that. That's why there's no more, no more yeah. swords allowed uh, for swords. as trophies. Yeah, but listen, yeah. hey, at the end of the day. You got in. Did you pay? And then uh, listen. So she paid. So she she gave it to me, and then uh, she said, she <laughs> she said, she said, did you did you uh, did you give me any uh, publicity for the show? And I said no because I came here at the last minute. And I said, but this will be talked about on my show. So now you can uh, you, you can, then she you said, can well, still show me. you can still thank him uh, for giving said, you for me. giving you a free pass. Come on, we got to give him a little credit. Hey, I didn't finish yet. Okay. She goes, "Show me." So I go to my Instagram <laughs> and I'm going down the line and I'm showing her different things I did with Olympia TV. I said, "See that guy right there? That's the Mayan. I got a suit. Why am I wearing a suit? Why is that our background? Because I work with Olympia TV." See this right here? That's Dennis James. So you had to, <laughs> so you had, yeah. yes. So, so you had to prove who you are. Prove it. Prove it. <laughs> you want to see? <laughs> see that Tim Wilk? I said, see that, that guy right there? I said, see that guy? I'm working right there. I'm uh -huh. at work. My place of business. Yeah. So it was that type of thing, and I, that was a little annoying for me because I was like, man, don't tell me I haven't done all these shows and been around all these people. I compete in Canada. I competed. All over America, all over Australia, all over Europe, all my life. And that's all I've done. So I didn't think I needed to go through that. But then I'm going, then I see uh, Regan come in and they she run around the corner. Regan, you need anything? You got all the tickets you need? <laughs> of course. It's yeah. Regan Grimes. Then I seen another, then I seen Ron over there at the other thing. Oh, got some tickets, get some tickets for the, oh, do you need a ticket? Oh, you need you need a badge. You need. I was like, damn, they treated me like they must have really treated me like some damn. <laughs> I don't know what the hell I am anymore. What have you done for me lately, you, kind of thing? You, you're in a, you, you're in a foreign country. You're in Canada. Yeah. Uh, but but Matt, I have a question also because you are into this. Who do you see as an up and comer? Who do you think can squeeze into the top five at Olympia this year that uh, we didn't mention? Um, honestly, I, I think Martin is very good. Uh, I don't know if he is going to be top five this year, but I definitely think that he is going to shift the placing. Um, I was, I was very impressed with, with his physique, um, and, and what he's done. Uh, so that's somebody that I see for sure, you know, that, that can really shift things up. I, I think Tony O'Bergen is still on the rise. Uh, you know, clavicles may, might not be the widest, you know, but I think when he really nails and again, I think Tonio is one of those guys, not that his physique is similar to Sean's, but the, the combination of condition truly has to be there for him to, to really accentuate his look, you know, so that's another guy that I'm super impressed with right now. And also I, uh, I totally, this is not disrespectful to him. I don't remember his name, but the guy that got fifth in New York, I was Massive, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Christian. Uh, now, obviously, uh, he's the, not going to the Olympia this year, the, not the, yet. The, Pol the Polish guy, the Polish guy. Yeah, yeah. he's still he's still competing uh, in a few more shows. He can still qualify. Isn't yeah? Isn't I've a show coming up impressed. this weekend? Probably, or, or at least Italy. I mean, uh, uh, I, I think that uh, he's doing Italy two weeks from now. And, and there's uh, Spain. There's Portugal. There's Spain. There's Spain, Italy, Portugal, and then uh, uh, Dubai afterwards. Yeah. Uh, you know. 
my guy is going to be doing Yeah, I was well. also impressed with that with that Polish guy at the, in New York. Yeah, I was extremely impressed. Because he, I saw him when they brought him out in groups after the, the, the um, for prejudging, he stood right next to Nick. That's why I saw him. Because yeah. I was like, who is that guy? You know? Yeah, but, but Matt, now, now the show is over. So if you're impressed with Martin, did he give Nick run for his money? Like Tyler Mania was uh, explaining, it was like so, so close. Oh, you don't think so? I don't, I don't think that Martin is that good. Um, I, I honestly don't. Um, but I do want to give give him credit, the, the amount of work that he's done. I think that he's for sure going to be in that like second call-out group. Um, I see him being there for sure. Okay. Now, now um, you were there, and you mentioned something before that uh, Nick needs to get more maturity through his legs. And, but... Standing there, and I was analyzing, uh, Martin was so greatly conditioned, but super full, exploding full, that uh, his legs blunted the uh, the separation. And when you look, uh, Nick looked like he had a uh, way more separation on the legs than Martin. This was yeah. me observing that. But now he said, uh, the the you know Tyler Mania says that was super conditioned, and super conditioned, super full. Upstairs, it make a difference because the most muscular shots and chest reactions and shoulders fullness, he actually could, you know, stand next to a uh, uh, neck. That fullness was there, but uh, too full in the legs. Is this is this yeah. fair assessment, or uh, I didn't see it correctly? No, oh, I mean I think uh, Martin's Martin's detail really comes out when he fully locks the quad in. You know, when he gets full extension of the quad. Um, yeah, but yeah. he's got that. He just has that like muscle belly sweep look. And, you know, and I, I don't want to like miss, miss my words, but Nick's, Nick's muscle maturity in his was, I was actually super happy with in New York, but he needs more of that billowing sweep yeah. still, you know, just to make him, make him that much more dominant. Yeah. What do you think of Andrew Jack? I think Andrew's incredible. I mean, honestly, so <laughs> this is another conversation backstage in Pittsburgh. You know, Nick and I are just talking about everybody because we like we love bodybuilding, you know, we and we like to see these guys progressing. Andrew backstage looked insane. Like we were like, holy cow. I mean, the way his chest was just like standing off of him with no pump, like it was insane. You know, I think Andrew just still has to really find again, going back to this like different body type, but I would still like to see Andrew more conditioned. And I think if he does that, and, and also too, I think Andrew. In my opinion, Andrew brings more energy to the qualifier than he does to the Olympia. That could be a fatigue thing. That could be a lack of confidence thing. But, like, when he comes out in Texas, he comes out as the winner. When he comes out at the Olympia, he comes out as a competitor. You know, like, as just one of the contestants. And I just, like, his face looks different. But, like, I've, I've always been a fan of Andrew. Yeah, I, mean, I know what you mean. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, guys... That brings us to the end. Matt, hey, wait. what weight? Cool One way. more thing. Cool way. Say shout yeah. out to a Rod, Rod Powers had a had a had a dinner with me on when I was out there in Toronto. He's a, the mayor of the city. Just wanted to give him a shout out. Okay. Body, want to see more bodybuilding going on in Toronto. And yeah, the free bird people brought me over to some Indian dinner. All right. Shout out you to know. Ron Hashe or what how do you pronounce his last name, the promoter? For oh, for hooking Chris oh. up, for hooking Chris up with a ticket. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And and thank, thank, you, thank you, Matt. I know you got a background I, check on him too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and th <laughs> thank you, Matt, because I know you're busy, man. I thank you for still oh, make, making the time to jump on. It was awesome. Absolutely. And uh, hopefully we can get you back on maybe after the Olympia to talk about what for happened sure. at the Olympia. Going into the Olympia. Going into the Olympia, you guys let me know. I'm happy to. Do all it. right, I appreciate you guys. Thank you, man. All right. Take care, y'all. Be safe. God bless. Peace out. Thanks, guys. Stephanie Jones. <laughs> <laughs>